Tens of thousands of people have fled northern Gaza, and many still remain after the Israeli military gave them 24 hours to leave the area before it launches a major ground offensive. They were ordered to move south of the Wadi Gaza as, as Israeli troops prepare to hunt down and destroy Hamas, which is regarded as a terror organization by many Western governments, including the UK. Around 1,900 people have died so far in Israeli airstrikes on Gaza, according to Palestinian officials. Limited raids in Gaza have already taken place, and there are reports that the bodies of some Israeli hostages have been recovered. The hostages were snatched a week ago by Hamas militants in raids which have left 1,300 people dead. Our reporter Nick Johnson has the latest details. Fleeing for their lives. Those living in the north of the Gaza Strip heading south. 1.1 million people, roughly the same size as the entire population of Birmingham, were told by Israel they had 24 hours to leave their homes. It happened to our grandfathers. Now it's happening to us, Mohammed says. It's raising the ghosts of the past. The bombs still fall, tearing buildings and families apart. I want my daddy, this little girl cries. Israel says it's already launched some localized ground raids inside Gaza. While it readies its next move, a warning from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. We are striking our enemies with an unprecedented power. Our enemies have just begun to pay the price. I can't divulge what comes next, but I can tell you this is just the beginning. The UN Secretary General urged both sides to protect civilians. Even wars have rules. International humanitarian law and human rights law must re be respected and upheld. Civilians must be protected and also never use the shields. It's exactly a week since Hamas gunmen rampaged through southern Israel. Families still coming to terms with the lives lost. This memorial for Tom Godo, killed while protecting his wife and three children during the attack on a kibbutz. At least 150 Israelis were kidnapped. Families of the victims leaning on each other for support. Katya's son among those missing. We are very anxious. Our hope is that our child comes back. We cannot think otherwise. Our child has to come home. A deep sense of foreboding. The ratcheting up of this crisis seems inevitable. Nick Johnson, BBC News. Well, we're now joined by Lord Mark Malik Brown, former Deputy Secretary General of the UN and current president of the Open Society Foundations. Thank you for joining us. We've been discussing the proposal put forth by Russia to call for a ceasefire. What's your feeling on this proposal? Do, do you think there's any chance that a ceasefire might be implemented? I mean, it'd be wonderful if there could be a ceasefire. And, you know, the Brazil, Brazilians who chair the Security Council this month have also got a much more balanced resolution, which begins with a condemnation of Hamas for its attacks on Israeli citizens, and then goes on similarly to call for a ceasefire to allow proper humanitarian access and support to civilians at risk in Gaza. And, you know, I, I would love to believe that the, the, the Security Council can, can come together around that. But in fact, there are a pretty wide range of views at the moment with some Western countries, US particularly, you know, certainly calling for humanitarian restraint, but also, you know, feeling, and they're correct in law, that Israel has an absolute right to, uh, to you know, strike back at Hamas, which it does, um, and by, Putting that first and foremost, it's inhibited its ability to, the US has inhibited its ability to also demand a ceasefire and 
respect for the rule of law and the and for humanitarian law. So, you know, the trouble is a, a lot of Israel's friends are a little ambivalent at best in their messaging, you know, recognizing Israel's right to self-defense and then leaving very much in second place uh, respect for uh, the civilians at risk. And, and so it, it's tragically hard to see how we get quickly enough to a point where both sides pause, hold back, and try and allow a little space, not just for humanitarian protection, but for the beginnings of diplomacy as well. Lord Malik Brown, then, what do the discussions that are going on at UN headquarters in New York tell us about the, the health, the strength of the United Nations in general? Is there any prospect that the UN as a body can really institute peace between the Israelis and, and the Palestinians? Well, look, I think the Secretary General, who, you know, has been criticized quite a lot lately for a fairly sort of weak performance at the recent UN General Assembly when he sort of acknowledged his organization was broken, has had actually a good first week of this crisis. He has an article in today's New York Times, which is very balanced, which uh, calls for a suspension of the violence and uh, humanitarian protection and acknowledges the long-standing wrongs against both communities, against Israel, Israelis and against Palestinians and the need for both uh, to, to have a political voice and to arrive at a political solution uh, to their decades-long uh, confrontation. Mm. And, but the Security Council, as I say, while I think it's a happy accident that this month it's chaired by Brazil, a country which is always trying to find peace and a middle way to any conflict. It's been criticized for trying to do that in the case of Ukraine and Russia. But I think that's exactly the skill set we need in the chair of the council at the moment. But, you know, so and, and you know, similarly, the humanitarian chief at the UN has spoken out strongly against the risk uh, of the risk to the one million Palestinians who are being pressed by Israel to move to the south of the country. The Red Cross has come out strongly. So, you know, there are a lot of principled moral voices speaking up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to the real import of your question, will it lead to an early resolution of this? I suspect not. This, you know, a terrible crime was committed last weekend, and mm. I suspect Israel will not be satisfied until it is, you know, militarily uh, disarmed, neutralized Hamas. But what Israel needs to remember and what the UN needs to keep saying is there may be a military solution to Hamas that is not a military solution to the Palestinians. Uh, mm. For the Palestinian people, there has to be a political solution. And that's been postponed for decades. And each time there's a crisis like that, this it seems to get kicked further back into the long grass. Lord Malik One Brown, as, as you're speaking, I just want to, to bring in an alert that we've just received um, from AFP. They're saying that Saudi Arabia has paused talks on the normalization of ties with Israel. Can you reflect on that development? Where does that leave Israel now that those, those talks that have been going on for quite some time now, fostered by the United States with Saudi Arabia, have been paused? Well, I, I think this was anticipated. It would have been impossible for Saudi Arabia to have continued them at this time. Uh, you know, it has in recent years been quite quiet on the issue of Palestinian rights. But when uh, the events of this week unfolded, it, you know, raised its voice much more clearly in defense of uh, the Palestinian people. And it would be just in terms of uh, the optics and politics of the region impossible to press on uh, in any effort to, to, to normalize relations with, with Israel at the very same time that Israel was seen as attacking a Palestinian Arab civilians uh, in Gaza. But I don't know whether in the longer term, I mean, I think this is now up to Israel, whether it wants to close that door forever, which would be the result of a which will happen, I think, if it 
makes a long-term occupation or long-term military intervention uh, into Gaza, or whether it recognizes the need to contain its military action in as surgical and brief a form as possible so that it can get this back on track. Because for both Israel and Saudi Arabia, the stakes are high. It would be a reordering of, of the Middle East in a dramatic way. And I think, uh, you know, there will be a desire to try once the fighting is dies down to, to try and recover this negotiation. Okay, really good to hear your thoughts on the diplomatic front. Lord Mark Malik Brown, former Deputy Secretary General of the UN and current President of the Open Society Foundations. Lord Malik Brown reflecting there on the news that Saudi Arabia has paused talks on normalization of ties with Israel. That information coming to us from AFP. And we'll bring you more on that when we get.